Hi friends. <clears throat> Today I'm playing with these fun little plants that I see around. Um, and honestly, they are typically in like swampy areas and they're called cattails. Um, I think they're really fun and I think they could be really, really interesting in some, um, like maybe on a card or something. So what I'm going to do first, well, let me just show you what I'm using today. I'm using 140 pound cold press paper, my Artisto pads, which, you know, I love because I can collect these and they're really thick and I think do really well with, um, using a lot of water. So I love these because it keeps all of my practice and notes and color boards and swatches all together. And then I'm using my My Lang paints, uh, mostly just to be very honest because I can't afford to paint with Winsor Newton every day. So I have that. I've got my two containers of water, one to wash, one to rinse. And then I've got my paper towel to blot off my um, brush if I have too much. I did grab my, also my Lang palette, and these just have some of the metallics because I thought if I get to the end of my painting, it might be kind of fun to add some little metallics in there. And then I've got my uh, favorite little palette, uh, Meaden palette. Um, I like it because I can hold it in my hand and move it around, and it's got really large wells. And Meaden, I just can't say enough about I love their ceramic products they're not too expensive and they um, just feel like quality so let's go ahead and get started I think what I might do um, I wasn't sure if I should do this because I don't know if it'll dry in time and because I still have not figured out how to edit my paintings um, I don't usually wet my whole page, but let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's see here. I'm just going to grab this brush. Um, this is a Da Vinci brush. And I'm going to go ahead and wet my paper. Now, as you can see, this Artisto paper, it does kind of fold up, but it will dry nicely. Um, so that's kind of one of the reasons why I've liked it. I don't even know where I got this Da Vinci brush, to be honest. I've had a bunch of them. It holds a lot of water, and it's actually really good for washes. So I'm going to go in, because I live around the hills here, and I'm just going to add in um, maybe, let's just do a little bit of blue sky. As you know, I'm not a big landscape person, but let's go ahead and play with that. So I'll just add in some blue in the background here for the sky. Like that. Let me make it a little bit brighter here and there. Again, not a landscape person, so bear with me on these. I do them personally, but um, don't typically do them for camera. And there we go, that's probably good. And then what I'll do is I wanna take, I don't have my tissue here, so I will just take some of this and maybe just create some little clouds. I'm sure you all are aware of that technique. It's nothing new. And then what I typically do, and this is just my Princeton six round, long round, uh, it's a number six, and I'm going to go around maybe with a lighter color of blue. Not lighter, darker value. But what I'm going to do is just go around the edge of some of these clouds. And like that. Just wetting my brush. There we go. Something like that. And then before this dries too much, now I'm getting this awfully wet. I might normally 
have taped down my paper and I'm just gonna create maybe a little bit of color in the background, maybe with a little bit of green, green and brownish. There we go. Okay. Something like that. As you can see, I think, maybe not, this brush holds literally loads and loads of water. Maybe add in a little bit of brown in there. Oop. There we go. Okay, now the thing here is gonna be to get this to dry in time so I can paint on this and show you. I think what I'll do, one second, I'm just going to grab my little dryer and see if we can dry that. So sorry, I, I really need to learn to be able to edit my videos. So if y'all just want to walk away or fast forward, I'm going to go ahead. I don't know how to turn my volume off and I'm going to try and dry this. Oops, I'm losing my paint palette. So this should work pretty quickly, I hope. So, so, so sorry, I don't know how to edit this out. I just want to get it dry enough so I can add in some of those cattails in the bottom here. And that's probably good enough. I think you'll get the gist of what I'm trying to do. Okay, so I'm going to use, I think I'll use again my six long round and going to, let's go ahead and start with these cute little cattails. They're kind of, they remind me of like a hot dog. And I'm going to use, um, let's see, let's use our burnt sienna, which I like because it has a little bit of a reddish tint in it. And I'm going to start with a light value now it might spread a little because this is still damp. So let's go ahead and just something like this. It's not doing too bad actually. I'm kind of surprised. There we go. And then I think I will also use a burned brown or Van Dyke brown in my My Lang palette for some of that darker. And I wanna do this while it's wet so that I get that really pretty blend. And then let's just add in a tiny bit of gold. Water down a bit, because gold can be pretty, pretty much take over your painting if you're not careful. There we go, something like that. Now, if I want to pick up some of that, I can do that with my brush like that. And there we go. I'm going to go into that with my olive green before it completely dries because I want the green to kind of go into that cattail there. And just using the tip, The cattails I've seen have that type of thing going on. And there we go. So maybe just dip into these colors again. I'm using all of these Mylene colors, Burnt Sienna, Sienna. I think they all have a place in there. 
and it's really pretty. And then let's just do another one here right next to it. Just using the side of my brush. There we go. Maybe a little bit of that darker burned brown or Van Dyke brown. Winsor Newton also has a Van Dyke brown. There we go. So look, aren't those pretty? I think they're really unusual looking. And just going in with maybe one more here. Let's see, how about right here? Using the side of my brush, just like that. And again, some of that darker brown. Washing and rinsing my brush, and I'm just going to soften some of this a bit. Now these all feel like they're kind of the same size, so I'm going to go back in and create some smaller ones. So that's what I wanted. I wanted that to spread into the brown. I really like that. Like that. And then let's maybe do one kind of sideways. The other thing is I noticed in some of the pictures that these also could have this little spiky thing on top, like that. And then I just wanna do a smaller one in the background. And it's important to do different values too. So I'm gonna rinse my brush and create some lighter values of these little cattails. So they look like they're in the background. Because the closer things are, they look more in front of you, of course. the lesser the uh, detail in that, they're gonna look farther away. Let me pick up a little bit more of that green. Add that in there. I'm gonna add some of that green and brown together too. Now really, I would have liked to have with that wash created more of this color in that wash as well. But that's all right. Can maybe add some of that brownish color in the background here. Hopefully I'm not making a big hot mess here. Maybe create some washiness in there. There we go. And I think I'll add some more over here. So I'm gonna pick up some of those browns um, this one's sienna, there's a burnt sienna. A little bit of the darker, which is a Van Dyke brown. And just create some more of these. In the background here. They're just hints of them anyway. I 
there we go. And then some of those stems. Now, if I keep working on this, as this all gets drier and drier, I can go in and keep adding more layers so that it looks closer because the washier it is, the more in the background it's going to look. And then maybe even a couple little goldish brownish stems and leaves here just for some fun and like that. I think that's really pretty. Maybe a few more over here. A little bit of Van Dyke Brown. So this six brush is working really well here. And I'm trying to make these look like they're a little bit more in the background. So I'm okay with them looking kind of washy and that wet on wet. And then just flicking my brush if you have some good um, writing, you could probably do some calligraphy right here in the hills just to make it look kind of pretty. One more little thing I saw too, let's give it a try, is I saw these, um, I, I don't even know what these are called, but I thought they were really cute. They were like these fuzzy-ish things. Um, so I think I might try and add in a few of those. It almost looked like wheat. Um, let's see, let's see if I can do that. Um, I think what I'll do is use a light wash of gold and It's the only way I can think to paint them. They were very interesting looking. Something like that. And they were just these little wheat looking things. So I'm very much ad-libbing here, everyone. I don't have these in front of me. I'm just playing really with my imagination. with what I think could be kind of pretty and what I might see. So there's some of those. Um, let's do maybe a couple of those right here. Maybe add in some of those colors here. There we go. I think that's really pretty. So what do you think? Does it look interesting, like something you might give a try to? Before I finish here, what I'm gonna do is just go in with a little bit darker value and maybe create um, some little wispy lines to make it look more in front here. Now this is still wet, so it's not gonna let me get real detailed. But if you do try to paint this, as it dries, I would go in and just create some darker little stems and such. To maybe look like some of these are right in front. So there you go. I hope you give this a try. It's just kind of fun and play. And 
I really enjoy using my Princeton 6. This is the Velvet Touch, by the way, which I use because I love the feeling of the brush. Um, and I actually didn't even use my um, metallics, kind of forgot about them over here. But maybe we could add in a little bit of that now. I'm just going in that. The metallics would have been really pretty with those. Yeah, add in those metallics. I think that's really pretty. Let's see what the bronze looks like. Yeah, you could definitely do that on these. And that really makes it pop. There you go. And then, as I said, when this dries, I'll go in and add some darker uh, stems and things in the front here. All right, everybody, I hope that was fun for you. I always like finding interesting plants and different things to paint that are a little bit unusual. And I came across this and thought this would be really fun for you to play with. All right, happy painting, everyone. And I'll uh, find all my links for anything I've used here and uh, we'll share those with you. Some things I do get a little percentage of. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, I kind of save it up and buy supplies, but uh, thank you to those of you too lately that have been giving me super thanks. I appreciate it so much, Sandy. You have been a doll. Um, I don't get a lot of them, but I know you, I do notice yours. So thank you for that. And happy painting, friend. And most of all, just have fun paint things the way you like to paint them, the colors you like, and give them your unique style. And I'll see you all soon. Bye.